Joining us now to wrap up the week's markets action is Fahima Adia from Momentum Securities. Fahima, thanks so much for joining us today. Now let's kick things off with the general markets performance. I mean, for the most part of the week, markets were pretty mixed. We started off slow, then we saw some positivity on Tuesday as it seemed like traders were shrugging off that CPI print from the US. Then later on in the week, we saw red screens right after the PPI data came out. Fahima, inflation still proving to be very sticky, I see. Afternoon, Antoleng. Thanks for having me. Yes, it was quite a mixed week, I think, for markets this week. Uh, we saw the JSE open a bit weaker today. Like you said, there's been quite a bit of data releases coming mm -hmm. through from the U.S. this week. Yesterday, we saw the PPI inflation come out, and that was a bit stronger than what was expected on the back of higher food inflation and also on fuel costs. And uh, like you said, you know, earlier in the week, we saw that CPI number come out of the U.S. and also a slightly stronger than what the market was looking for. So I see, I think that CPI number in combination with the higher PPI number sort of had an impact on the market and uh, spooked the market a bit. And we saw equity markets uh, come off and bond yields go a bit higher. But if we look at the U.S. futures today in Tulang, it seems like it's up. Uh, so it seems like there'll probably be some recovery after that initial shock. But uh, yeah, like you said, you know, given uh, the stronger data that we're seeing coming out of the U.S., it does kind of indicate that inflation isn't quite yet mm -hmm. under control. And economists are now looking to maybe uh, three or even two rate cuts this year instead of the initially expected four cuts. That would have been my next question. Is this just a blip or are we going to start seeing economists, you know, start changing their expectations? I mean, at the beginning of the year, well, towards the end of last year, we did see a lot of optimism on the back of those um, rate cut expectations with some even pegging those rate cuts as early as March. Here we are, slap bam, in March and there's nothing. <laughs> Yes, yes. No, definitely. I think we're already seeing a lot of economists change their stance mm -hmm. um, after we've seen these latest data releases come through. Uh, we now seem to have the overall view kind of shifting from March to June. Mm. Um, and also the number of interest rates cuts is what have come down. We, uh, you know, towards the end of last year, everyone was very optimistic and thought we'd see four rate cuts. But now it seems like... Uh, we're likely only looking at three rate cuts or even two rate cuts. So, yes, inflation is definitely not coming off as quickly as everyone had hoped. And I think, yeah, economists are having to kind of temper their expectations. We can only hope at this point, Fahima. Now let's get into some company news. Lipster's out with annual numbers. Revenue up 5% and total diluted hips rising 6%. Our markets seem to have liked the numbers. The last time I checked, um, it was trading in the green. What did you make of those annual earnings? Yes, so I think it was uh, quite a decent set of results, you know, especially considering the backdrop, the headwinds that we're seeing with a consumer that's under a lot of pressure mm. and increased inflationary environment with the higher interest rates. And uh, yeah, the market did seem to definitely like it. It was up more than 3% this morning. And the results were broadly in line with market uh, consensus expectations. It seemed what was really liked is the fact that the margin uh, improved, and that seems to be a sustainable improvement. And uh, while they did mention that there is increased competition on the perishable side of the business, they are focused now on uh, their product mix improving towards higher margin meat products. And we've also seen uh, some improvement in the expense management side of the, the business, which has positively impacted the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Export margins are also expected to benefit from the weakness in the RAN. So, yes, overall, I think, you know, it was a, a, a decent set of results and likely to see further improvement uh, in the next half once we see food inflation come up further and a few interest rate cuts. Mm -hmm. Now, Moving over to Oceana, which updated the markets, it cited a good showing from its U.S. business. But back in Africa, things don't seem to look good. Just walk us through the performances mm -hmm. we're seeing from those different regions and how they could impact uh, Oceana's overall performance. Yes, so um, this also seemed like quite a strong update. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw them report that HIPS will be about 60% higher and the market also liked this update. Uh, the share price was up about 4%. Uh, 
And like you said, you know, the, the, that strong increase was actually driven by uh, revenue coming from the U.S. market, uh, that Daybrook business. Um, so what happened there is they benefited from the higher inventory levels that they had, which enabled them to sell that fish meal and fish oil at the record uh, dollar pricing levels. Revenue also then benefited from the weaker rand. Uh, so there's, of course, that global shortage for fish meal and fish oil, which has put upward pressure on the price. But locally, it, it's been a bit of a challenge. Um, we've seen some weaker sales volume come from Lucky Star and also on the wild caught seafood side of the business. So if we look at Lucky Star in particular, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not too concerned about the volume declines there because it was off quite a high base. You know, we saw a lot of consumers try to uh, buy in bulk ahead of the January price increases. So we're expecting to probably see uh, recovery there, you know, once they run out of that product. Mm -hmm. uh, and what really impacted the wild caught side of the business were lower catch rates uh, due to poor fishing conditions. They also had to shut down some factories for repairs and maintenance, and there was an unplanned uh, breakdown of one of the uh, big shipping vessels. Um, so just in terms of the outlook that they're given, though, Catch rate, uh, the catch rates are expected to improve in the next half. Uh, they are busy repairing that vessel, uh, and the factory should be back up and running. So I think the outlook looks pretty positive going mm -hmm. ahead. Well, while Oceana has some troubles here in Africa, which are going to be solved pretty soon, in the banking scene, Standard Bank released annual earnings that Africa region's uh, unit powering through, and those higher interest rates also lifting profits. But I don't know, it didn't seem like markets were too happy with the numbers. Standard Bank closed in the red yesterday, but when I looked today, it was in the green. Is there anything in particular that could have changed th that sentiment? Yes, I think that's been the, the biggest question of the day <laughs> today is given that stronger set of results, which were definitely stronger than what uh -huh. we've seen in First Rand and the other banks, why is the share price, why was the share price down about 6% yesterday? So I think what's happening uh, there in Tuoleng is the market was basically just kind of taking into account that outlook that Standard Bank provided, uh -huh. which didn't seem too exciting for the year ahead, given you know that we're still in a high interest rate uh, environment. And um, the other thing that seems to have maybe impacted market's perception is if we look at the actual quality of the earnings, a lot of the profits came from trading profits. Um, ah. So if you look at trading profit, uh, while that was good, it's, it's quite a volatile uh, metric. And um, I wouldn't say it's, it's considered particularly sustainable in the long term. So it's something that can change very quickly. Uh, so in terms of the quality of earnings, I would think, you know, first rand's quality was probably better. Um, it, it's always better to see more Profits come from your, you know, uh, non-interest uh, uh, revenue or your net interest income. But, uh, yeah, it, it was good to see, though, that uh, a lot of the revenue has come from the Africa region. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been strong there in terms of earnings gen generation. But there's also concerns, you know, around the devaluations of some currencies in the African market. But from my point of view, I think it was quite a, a solid result. And maybe the market just needs a bit more time to digest it fully. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fahima, quick, quick, what is your stock pick? We have about 30 minutes, 30 seconds rather. 30 seconds, <laughs> okay, sure. Um, yeah, so my stock pick is First Solar. It's okay. a leading American solar technology company that provides solar modules to generate electricity. Uh, it's quite unique in that it's the only U.S. solar company that's not reliant on China to, to manufacture for it. The advanced modules also provide a low carbon alternative to conventional PV uh, panels, so it's more environmentally friendly. And uh, it's, it's considered quite a high growth uh, company when you look at the earnings. It's got a compounded annual earnings growth rate of about 42% over five years. And uh, we're expecting to see a lot more growth come from the stock, uh, looking, up, uh, looking at upside of at least 40%. Let's leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and your insights. That was Fahima Adia from Momentum Securities.